Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next episode. This is episode two of my redstone tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be working on something a little more complex, but nevertheless, very important. So, um, we're going to start out with the basic gate, um, the NAND gate. This one operates similar to the AND gate. Uh, slightly different though. The way this works is basically if any of the inputs or if both of the inputs are off then the input is off. Let me just demonstrate. See? Uh, the input is off. Now the NAND gate is one of the most useful gates if not the most useful because it makes up any gate. Um, any gate at all. Now, I will demonstrate. Um, so, there's a gate, it is called the XOR, exclusive OR. This one um, simply works whenever you have one input on, but if there's two, then it doesn't work at all. Um, you may be thinking, well, that's not that useful but it is extremely useful, um, most definitely. So, I'm going to build one using only NANDs. So the way that we do this is we start off with one NAND, and then uh, I'll just put levers on the side of these that'll make it easier for in the long run. Okay, and then we have two other NANDs. And these are going to be right here hooked up to the output of this NAND. Oh. So, um, now what we do is we take the outputs of these like so. And then we put them into the input of another NAND. So this one takes four NANDs in total. Now, if you guys are wondering what use this could be, um, I will show you in a moment. OK. So that is your NAND. I will demonstrate it working by placing a piston at the end and putting a wool block on top. So the way this works is basically um, the input of this NAND is inverted by default. Because um, you see these two lines going into uh, these two NANDs. Basically, whenever you turn this one on, it doesn't yet um, turn off this first NAND. So therefore, it's able to go through here and activate this NAND, which by default is already off. And then, once we turn on two levers, this NAND turns off. Thus, turning on or turning off this one. Um, it, it's quite the concept, but it works uh, just fine. So you may be wondering, uh, to what use would this be? And I, I will show you. But first, I want to teach you binary. Um, binary, it does look complicated, but it's actually fairly simple. We'll walk you through it um, very slowly. So, um, each one of these lines is called a bit. Let me, let me just split these up just a slight bit. Like so. Okay. 
There we go. Perfect. Um, so each one of these lights uh, is going to represent one bit. Um, now each one of these bits can only be on or off. Makes sense. Um, now in binary, like in decimal, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, um, we have certain place values. So let me get a sign. Uh, try to explain this. So in base 10, or the decimal system, we have what is called place values. Uh, so your 1's place, your 10's place, and we'll, we'll only go up to 100's place. Okay, so um, you can only have up to 9 in the 1's place, correct? Or any of these, you can only have up to 9. Uh, so in the 1's place, we, we could have a 0, and that would work. But we can't have um, a, a 10 in the 1's place. Uh, that's That doesn't work. So we have to set this to 0 and move that 1 over to 10's place. Uh, let's try another thing. If that, if that makes sense, um, then binary will make uh, a lot of sense. So uh, we're going to start off. Um, we call this the ones place. And basically, in uh, since this is called base 2, or base 10, so that's called base 10. This is called base 2. So what we need to do, like in base 10, we multiply by 10 each time. So 1 times 10 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. And so on and so forth. But in base 2, since we have the 2, we do it 1 times 2 equals 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. 2 times 4 equals 8. So these are our place values. We have 1, 2, 4, and 8. What we can do with these numbers, uh, say if we, want, if we want to make a 1, that's easy. We just do a 1. Now, uh, it, gets, it gets a little bit tricky um, in a moment. Since it is, it is binary, it's 1s and zeros. You can only go up to 1. That is your highest number. Um, we can't fit a 2 in here. Because we're already at a 1. We're already at our, our maximum right now. So we can't fit a 2. So we're going to have to add... We're going to have to carry a 1 over here. And that, that would get us 2. Um, now say, say we wanted 3. Well, we just add a 1. And that is 3. 2 plus 1 equals 3. Okay, well, um, what if we want a 7? Or, or no, what if we want a 4? Well, uh, we try to add a 1 to here. So 1, that makes it a 0. Try to add that carried over 1 to here. It makes it a 0. And that 1 carries over to here, getting us 4. So the way that we can implement this in redstone is um, by that XOR that I showed you. So what we're going to do is um, basically we're going to take out this this line here. Okay. Uh, so to make this an XOR, we first need to take these two. Or no, um, like I showed you in the first tutorial, 
you can transfer uh, wires over like that. So we need um, what is called a carry bit. Right now, um, if I press one, we have a one, right? Now, say we wanted to add another one. Think of this as one bit, okay? If we wanted to add one other one, then, you know, it doesn't work. It, it won't uh, work in that spot. So what we can do is take this from the first NAND cell, and we can transfer this over like so. And this would be your second bit. Show you, see? So that's your second bit. And basically, if we try to add another one to this bit, it transfers over to the next bit. This is called the carry out. So we're going to label this as carry out. Um, they notate it as C out. This would be uh, your first bit. So we're going to label that as 1. Um, now, oh, nah, I broke it. Okay. This uh, would be your input B and input A of the first bit. So that will be the it for this tutorial. If you want to see more, please subscribe, and I will be doing more videos like this in the next episode. See ya.